now it's for real on the streets of the capital. Disarming the Seleka militias, the number one objective, says the French military commander. From dawn, they set about it. On the ground, on the ground. One pistol and some cartridges off the streets. But these men were eventually allowed to go free. It is the law of diminishing returns, of course. The word soon gets around amongst the militia that the French are here and they avoid the area. What they're basically doing is letting the small fry go once they've been disarmed. Anybody who they consider important will, though, be arrested. And so far, there have been scores of those this morning. Elsewhere, emboldened by the French being here, Christian mobs now out on the streets, looting anything they can from Muslim shops and businesses. In another location, the Christian mob attacks a man and his teenage son, suspected of being former Seleka soldiers. The French troops try to intervene. But the Seleka haven't gone. This is a known Seleka vehicle. The men are militia and known as such. They're heading straight for a French checkpoint. Cool and confident, moments later they came back. Civilian clothing, no weapons, no problem. The crowds looking on know exactly what's happening. For their own safety, we won't identify people who spoke to us. I really want the French to help us, to get out on the ground, because there's nobody there. Everything's looted. I'm a victim myself. He said it's for the French to get the militia's weapons from the mosques, from their homes, and from the cemetery where they're hiding them, to get all their weapons. But the French can't be everywhere. In reality, they can hardly be anywhere, but this is progress. 24 hours ago, we were on the streets with French paratroopers. Hot, tense, an encounter between the paratroopers and the Seleka militia, usually drunk or stoned or both, all but inevitable. They came upon this group of Seleka militia. Neither side said anything or made any gesture. But the Seleka, armed and in uniform on the streets of the capital, seem to have disappeared one day on. Leaving a terrible stain on this capital, yet more people out this morning to bury their relatives. A man tells us how the Seleka took his two brothers and beat them to death. What we're seeing is that the French troops are not in the hotspots. For instance, around Camp Kars I, where they're killing people. There's no one there. They can do what they want over there. Around the middle of the day, a rainstorm built up over Bongi. Minutes later, we found ourselves surrounded by this. What was until recently one of the city's monasteries and grounds. Now a vast chaotic camp of terrified Christians still refusing to go home, French army or no French army. Yesterday we'd shown you 35,000 up at the airport. Today, around 17,000 up to 20,000 at night have been staying here for days in the dirt and the downpour. Brother Yilan told us people aren't going home because a kind of psychosis has set in. Only yesterday we had shooting in this district, so even more came. It's just not in people's interests to leave here. Can you blame them? A man carefully describes how his neighbors were hacked and shot to death, five of them. He's got all the close-ups to prove it, which we couldn't possibly broadcast, as they buried what had been the family next door. To say the French and African peacekeepers here have their work cut out is an understatement. In a city of looted bazaars, at least 50,000 homeless through the fighting and militias unlikely to go quietly.